After the scenario is created and tested, it's necessary to establish its continuous operation. The scenario should run automatically, not by pressing the one-time launch button. To do this, you need to deploy the scenario by clicking the deploy button. The scenario will become active by default, meaning the trigger node will activate when the initiating event occurs in the application, in our case, when an email arrives. Scenario versions can be viewed in the lower left corner. You can click on a version. You can see which versions existed in the scenario, which version is currently deployed in production. You can return to any version, for example, the third one, deploy it, and it will become the working version. The fourth version will be preserved, and you can always return to it. Thus, if the scenario is active, it will run without much intervention. Let's open the scenario execution history. There are two entries so far. Without launching the scenario or interacting with it, let's send an email. Let's click the refresh button. We'll see that the scenario has started its execution and the process is still ongoing. Let's try again. The scenario has executed, the execution status is visible, the version that ran during execution, as well as the number of operations that were performed in the scenario. By clicking the view button, you can see which nodes executed and what output data these nodes had. If an error occurred during the scenario execution, it will be displayed here, and you can view the error text and understand the cause. If you need to stop the scenario execution, you need to deactivate it. Thus, after the scenario is configured, it needs to be deployed and activated so that it runs without user intervention. And its execution history can always be viewed on a, on a separate tab.